In last week's video, I introduced the concept of delayed shifts through extensions and contractions of the fingers, and we looked at how it can be applied in repertoire. It's a pretty advanced technique and a very useful one, especially in passages where we want to play really smoothly and try to really hide the sound of any sliding. It can help us play more legato, it can help us improve dexterity and lightness in the fingers and fluidity. But just like I said in the previous video, before you tackle delayed shifts, please make sure that you are already familiar and quite fluent at traditional normal shifts. Unlike the kind where the forearm moves together with the finger, the delayed shift involves uh, where the fingers either make an extension or a contraction after which the forearm catches up. Once the forearm has caught up, then the shift has been officially completed. So one misconception that sometimes people make when it comes to shifting is that they think that the finger, when it goes to a new note, it is uh, the definition of the shift, but that is incorrect uh, because uh, I can uh, technically I can move a finger up, but I have not shifted yet until my arm has moved with it. So this is the shift, this is not. So it's very important that you understand this. So for delayed shifts, unlike moving like this, like a traditional shift, which you want to be already good at, we are going to make extensions and then catch up with the forearm, or we're going to make contractions of the fingers and then the form will catch up. So of course, after last week's video, I got a question, how can we practice this outside of the repertoire? How can we be already good at it before we actually encounter it in the repertoire and try to figure out what to do? Because very often we're going to notice in standard repertoire, and this happens in orchestral repertoire a lot, we encounter passages that are very awkward and it feels like we have to keep going between two positions and it's very uncomfortable. It happens a lot when we have tritones, augmented intervals, outlined fifths going back and forth where we want to avoid crossing extra strings. So how can we practice this outside of the repertoire? Hey, this is Ina Langerman from Violina.live helping you along your musical journey. Here is a fun way you can incorporate delayed shifts in your scale routine. And actually, I came up with these last night, so I don't know if these already exist in some kind of scale book. I did not get a chance to look around and do my research for that, so it's entirely possible these do already exist somewhere. But this exercise that I'm going to show you, it was inspired by a Dunas exercise from his Daily Dozen, where he has an exercise on thirds, in which he outlines a perfect fourth going up and then comes down by a step and then repeats for each scale degree. What we're going to do is we're going to play a scale on a single string. So let's say on the D string, I'm going to play the E major scale starting with the first finger. So we're going to outline the perfect fourth interval, but instead of going from first to fourth finger and then down to the G sharp, we're going to extend up to the third finger. And it comes in. So I extended up to the third finger and that was my anchor to move my forearm and then the note A resolved down to the G sharp and I was in the new position. Now I'm in second position and now I'll repeat the pattern from F sharp, the second scale degree, up of perfect fourth, shift, and then resolve. And now we're in third position. So we're going to repeat this pattern for one octave going up. Another benefit of the first exercise we're going to do is that it's going to help you prepare for fingered octaves because we're going to be outlining the perfect fourth interval with one and three and then the second version will do the same thing with two and four. So if you want to get better at fingered octaves or if you have not done them yet but you want a preliminary exercise for them, this is going to be a good one because it's going to really help you learn the distance of the perfect fourth in different positions for both one and three and then two and four. So I'm just going to play through the first exercise, which will be on the D string, on the E major scale. No fourth finger for this one. And then the 
can do the same one but uh, with two and four extending. So for the first one I'm just gonna do in stay in first position and then for F sharp I'm gonna extend up to B. This one is a little bit more challenging so you might need to do what I do and that is uh, move the thumb up before reaching up with the fourth finger. So the next exercise we're going to do a similar scale but this time we're going to practice contracting the fingers instead so this is another way to do a delayed shift it's based more on the finger substitution which I'm gonna cover more of in the next video uh, because it's a whole separate topic and there are more useful exercises just for finger substitutions which we'll do separately but uh, we can do the same scale in which case we are going to outline with one and four the perfect fourth and then instead of going to second finger we will replace it with first and then the arm will catch up and now we're in the new position again instead of second finger we're going to substitute the best we can and so on. So let's put this one together. Coming down is definitely much more tricky because we have to lift our third finger and then replace that spot with the fourth finger after which we catch up with the forearm. This one's definitely much more tricky so I would recommend to practice it very very slowly. And also feel free to come up with your own variations on these exercises. For example you can totally do um, just the broken third. <laughs> like that, um, in which case you would practice the distance between first and second fingers and then you can repeat the same exercise to practice the distance between second and third fingers okay you know you can just be creative and come up with your own exercises the point is that each one has a purpose right so for example the two exercises we did for extensions they not only prepare you for fingered octaves but they also allow you to get a sense of many different positions at once so you're not just practicing uh, doing this between two different positions but right away you are incorporating uh, the hand frame in different settings you're learning the distances between positions you're doing actually a lot of things at once just with this one kind of exercise okay if you got any value from these exercises and maybe they gave you some new ideas please give this video a quick thumbs up to support this channel and so that youtube is more likely to share these videos with other folks also check out my playlist for shifting we're gonna have more videos in this category coming up soon and you can save the playlist for later if you would like a summary of all my content in both video and written form in your email inbox twice a month i do have a bi-monthly newsletter links down in the description below. I'll see you next week. Happy practicing!